everyone. Uh, my name is Monacy. This is Eleanor, Colton, Horatia, and Andy. We're Team 5, and to, we're going to present to you um, one of our solutions today. So basically, as you may know by now, the topic is food deserts, and our solution uh, aims to accomplish a few things, um, namely the uh, immense problem with nutrition in inner cities. Um, as you can see, this is a map of Houston, and the green areas are USDA-designated um, areas, which are food deserts, basically. Um, one of the things that we want to accomplish is to improve nutrition in these areas, get people back in touch with where their food is coming from, what um, sustainable agriculture is, and also kind of reverse some of the traditions which may have been overlooked in the past few decades. Um, according to the National Sustainability Agriculture Information Service, a lot of the people who uh, were traditionally or are traditionally involved in agriculture are people who are you know finding an inlet into society, people who are newcomers, people who are beginners. So this is kind of um, not only a way for us to obtain you know, nutrition for people, but also a way for people to re-enter a good, strong community. So with no further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Andy, who's going to tell you guys how we're going to get started. All right, so let's get started. Um, I will talk about how we are going to use the materials that the community already has to start building our project, and how we're going to ease the community into um, the goals that we are trying to accomplish. So um, a principle that we would like to follow as we're building our project is reusing materials. And we got a lot of our ideas about reusing materials from the last organic outpost, which is an effort in Houston um, that feeds the fifth ward through community gardens. And so some of the ideas that we got from them is using repurposed wood to build raised beds. Another example is using a, a dock to house our aquaponics operation and then another idea we had was to um, use something as simple as a truck bed to house our um, <coughs> vermicomposting and our worms and so a couple of networks that we kind of want to establish in the community to bring unity are a transportation system with bikes so that people have uh, easy access and a more environmentally friendly way to transport themselves to all the amenities we would like to offer. And then we would also like to place composting bins next to all the trash cans in order to kind of get the community more aware about our project and also um, have an easy source to develop our compost that we will use in our gardens. And we are planning on utilizing <coughs> half an acre, which would be a vacant lot, just to be begin with. And then later on in our presentation, I will talk about how we're going to expand. So now I will hand it off to Eleanor, who's going to talk to you about our involving people and our business plan. As Andy said, I'm going to first address the individual, and then I'm going to move on to the farmer's market as a whole. So to begin our farmer's market, we will let people um, come to the establishment, and they will get classes and things like seeds and compost to start their production, and then they'll be able to grow crops to sell at the farmer's market. We'll also employ things like uh, rooftop gardens and landscaping to, that they can actually eat, such as kale. Then if they can't or don't want to produce their own crops, they can produce things such as secondary goods, which include breads or soaps that they can sell at the farmer's market. Advertising will be used so that more people will learn about our program. And then if people can't come to our farmer's market, we'll have a vendor's. And it's sort of a play on an ice cream truck, but they'll, send, they'll sell fresh fr fruits and vegetables <coughs> to people in the neighborhood. Next, I'll be talking about market requirements. So I talked about the credit system, and the, it's kind of a pay-as-you-go system, but you get certain incentives if, in the farmer's market if you pay back the community. So in our market, we'll have producers only, which really protects the individual grower, no GMOs, USDA organic, and in-season things to make sure that it's all local. Then our farmer's market designed like this will have primary goods in the front and then secondary goods in the back. And it will also have festivities such as, you know, growing competitions or chefs or music. Next, Colton will be talking about sustainable practices. All right, for this part of the presentation, I'm just going to do a quick overview of the crops we plan on growing and some of the methods that we plan on using to grow these crops. So let us begin. <laughs> um, on our farm, we really want to have crops with a great diversity. We don't want to limit it to a certain amount that is seen in monocultur monocultures. So we want to grow the fruits and vegetables by season in order to have great diversity. 
Some of the vegetables you might see on our farm would include lettuce, broccoli, tomatoes, blackberries, etc. And for the methods that we plan on using to grow these crops, one of the things that we're really going to focus on is integrating um, or using IPM, Integrated Pest Management. And so this is basically using the variety of methods to reduce the impact that pests have on our uh, plants and crops and also reduce the need for pesticides. So one example of a method that's uh, following IPM is intercropping. And this is where basically you just alter your rows of crops with different crops so the, the soil will have a better and it will help. And then another two other methods that are good for IPM are cover crops and mulching. Mulching helps to conserve moisture and prevent weed growth and then cover crops can either distract pests from our actual crop or they can ward the pests away, like marigolds, for example. And then we would also like to really focus on bees as they are essential pollinators and according to National Geographic, 50% of the domesticated bees are in decline in the past 50 years. So by building simple habitats and offering flowering uh, plants, we really will help the bees. And also with domesticated ones, we can gain a profit with the honey. In addition, um, Andy sort of touched on our composting. And so we're going to use vermicomposting to get uh, good soil that we can use for our crops and a compost tea, which uh, is essential for um, getting, as we need to find a way to utilize the natural mineral cycle while reducing off-farm purchases which is something that holistic management really recommends. And so this will help with the compost tea and microbial activity. Now I'd like to hand it over to Horatia, who will talk about resources. All right, so the article on community gardening suggests that we charge people for the plots of land in order to cover for water use. And we're not really wanting to do that because we don't want to discourage anyone financially from gardening. And so what we're going to do instead, in order to reduce water consumption, is to utilize rainwater cisterns, which basically collect water from the rooftops whenever they rain in big containers so that you can use them another time. And then in order to utilize the rainwater that we do collect, we're going to do the drip system, which doesn't use near as much water and it's much more efficient because there's not as much evaporation going on. And then a really cool idea we had that we got from the last organic outpost was to use olas, which are unglazed ceramic pots that are stuck together like in the poster. And what you do is you fill it up with water and then you'll bury it in the soil. And whenever the sun starts baking down on the soil and it gets hot, the water will slowly start to sweat through the ceramic pot and then it'll get a nice moist area of soil around it. And then in order to reduce energy costs, we don't really have that many energy costs to start off with because we're just starting out and there's not really that many um, needs that we have for energy. But we are going to introduce a trolley system to get people to and from the farm so they don't have to drive their own individual vehicles, which would use a lot more gas than necessary, as well as, since it's local, you don't have to drive the crops back and forth to people um, across the city. It's just right within your own community. Now I'm going to pass it off to Andy to talk about the future for this farm. So in the beginning, I talked about how we were getting started, and now I'm going to talk about how we look to the future and we see a bright future ahead. And so I'm just going to give you a glimpse into some of the ideas that we have for the future once we have more funding. Um, we're thinking about bringing in solar panels and an aquaponics operation, which in a nutshell is where we put tilapia in a tank and the ammonia, ammonia that they produce um, in the water, that water will be used to feed the plants above them. And another, or other ideas that we have are to bring in agroforestry, and this involves bringing in fruit trees to be planted between crops <laughs> and those trees will also produce a crop that can be used. And then we would also expand our meat and poultry in order to meet the nutrition requirements. And now, Mommy, so you will finish this off. Okay, so I'll be discussing community. Um, one of the most important things that I think we should take away from this presentation is that we're, we have an idea which is looking to the future. It's got modern, um, new, creative ideas, but it also tries to bring back some of the traditions. So uh, as you can see here in the Farm to School program, farms will be allowed to um, sell their vegetables, produce to schools for lunches, and then schools in turn can send children to learn about sustainable agriculture. This program is actually really interesting and I think that it would help with future generations education. Um, other than that, one of the glaring issues that we want to discuss is that of nutrition. Um, heart disease and obesity are very preventable problems and nutrition could increase if you have access to fresh ingredients in your city. 
Um, and increasing greenery improves people's moods, decreases crime, everybody's happy. And um, as people have said, um, people, kids who, okay, kids who grow kale eat kale. And so we just really want to involve the kids. Thank you. Thank you. So where, I'm a little confused because you said you're going to use trolleys and have people transport back and forth to the community parks or so they don't have to drive themselves, but if it's a community, <coughs> wouldn't it be like within the community? Or how are you going to have a demonstration for them to go see or explain that a little bit? Uh, can I ask, I mean, let me see if I understand your question. Um, could you hold up the map really fast? Okay, um, were you, what were you saying exactly? Could so, you where, are you, where will your half acre plot be initially? Okay, we were thinking a central location somewhere around here so it would be more accessible and we could you know, make room for future expansion from the center of the city. Um, a trolley system would probably be a later addition because we wouldn't be able to initially afford that, but it would just encourage people to um, be able to produce at their home, um, baked goods, things like that, and then take it to the market. And then I think the whole idea is that um, we want the people really close to this location be able to just walk, but we also want to see if we can get the people that maybe not be able to come this far to be able to reach it. And if they have a large number of things to grow and they don't have their own personal transportation, we also want them to be able to bring their crops to market. So if I'm hearing you right, the idea for your farmer's market, which is, from what I understand, your main source of uh, revenue, that's like the ultimate goal, that's where you're going to be making mm -hmm. your most money, you're, you're not just relying on this half acre plot or other small plots, you're uh, hoping to attract other farmers, other growers from all areas of Houston, and or is it coming directly from this particular project? Uh, it starts directly from this particular project, but like Eleanor was saying, we do aim to expand to individuals and have individuals producing in their own land and like on their rooftops or you know making secondary goods as well. Um, if I could add oh, on yeah. to the answer to that question, um, we would source our like crops and stuff like in a local like so it would be at least at most 150 mile radius from our farmers market so that keeps it local and then that's where the market requirements come into play and incentive systems mm -hmm. for the individual farmers mm -hmm. keeping it producers only really helps to reduce the competition so we can let the people who are in the 150 mile radius um, do their thing and with the secondary goods oh <laughs> With the secondary goods, they should also be produced from primary goods to make sure that the, it's yes. the same. Um, you do mention that um, a couple of times you talk about, you know, like for example, producers only can come to your market. Who are your producers, ideally? Ideally, our producers are people who may have um, other problems that are preventing them from getting a job, people who are trying to find a way back into society. Um, I don't know, this is something we were discussing, maybe recent inmates. Uh, like but volunteer hours. We have, yeah, 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 volunteers initially, um, people who are just trying to find something to do. Um, other than that, we would slowly want to get more youth involved as well, so that um, it could be passed on to future generations and it would actually be a sustainable idea as opposed to just a phase. I have a follow-up question for that then. Yes. So how, do, how does this potential um, mini farmer, let's call them, uh -huh. uh, get their resources? Like where are they going to obtain their seeds, the materials and fields? So with the um, credit system, it's a way through the farmer's market when it initially starts for the individuals to start. So we'll have classes there for them to take because some people don't know how they would do that. And then we could equip them with th things like seeds and compost and then also the education and then they'll pay that back to the community, not necessarily monetarily, maybe with a p portion of their yield or um, you know, just anything that they can contribute. And then in the farmer's market, they'll get a closer spot to the front or something like a increased advertising just so that they're more prominent in the farmer's market rather than other people. That would be your incentive to pay back to your community. Yeah. Also, if schools will teach things like composting and the biology classes, it helps teach about the cycles, for example, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, and helps teach them really how the nutrients get put back into the environment, and so it's a hands-on approach really to learning. Any 
other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>